we continue discussing epigastric pain due to splenium deficiency. In chronic long-standing cases, splenium deficiency can indeed give rise to empty heat, but in very many cases, there is just the deficiency without empty heat. So this figure illustrates the progression of yin deficiency and the development of empty heat. So first we have the tongue without coating, but normal color and tongue without coating, red body. So we can see the progression of yin deficiency and the development of empty heat. Dr. Huang Kuang Wai makes an important differentiation between stomach in and spleen yin deficiency. He says that in stomach in deficiency, there is a deficiency of fluids, while in spleen yin deficiency, there is the deficiency of yin and blood. They are both yin deficiency as fluids, yin and blood are all part of yin. Dr. Mao Chong divides the clinical manifestations of spleen yin deficiency into three groups, and this may help the diagnostic process. The three groups are digestive symptoms. Under this, we have abdominal distension, poor appetite, dry stools, yin deficiency symptoms, dryness, dry mouth and throat, dry lips, and lack of nourishment signs, dull complexion, thin body, dry skin. As mentioned, dry lips are quite a key distinctive sign of spleen yin deficiency. Another very distinctive sign are small transversal cracks on the sides of the tongue. The acupuncture treatment of spleen yin deficiency is based on the following points. REN12, REN4, stomach 36, spleen 6, liver 13. A spleen yin deficiency very often occurs in conjunction with stomach yin deficiency, we will later outline the clinical manifestations and treatment of stomach indeficiency. Thank you for your attention.